Welcome back to YouTube Hero. Today we're talking about how to convert leads into customers and I'm really excited to be able to have Noelle here. I'm gonna be throwing a lot of difficult questions at you or at least detailed questions because she is a master of a strategy session. You know, to make millions of dollars from YouTube, it takes a lot of steps. We've talked about the leaf strategy and how to pull in people who've never heard of you before, how to take those viewers and turn them into leads. Yeah. Well, now we're having the conversation about how to have that conversation. conversation. Yeah. <laughs> so by the end of this video, you will know how to have a strategy session. Let's start at the beginning. Yes. How do you start a strategy session? I used to do so many strategy sessions that I feel like I just became an expert on them. So in the beginning, you really wanna just set up what the conversation is about. I think so many people fail to just set up the conversation. So I usually thank them for taking the call, celebrate them for being different. I know this may have been scary or something you've never done before, but I'm here, we're just gonna have a conversation. I kinda of try to bring those barriers down. So I thank them, you know, tell them what we're gonna talk about and then bring them down. Then I say, you know, in this conversation, we're gonna clarify your needs. I usually give like three things. And I think the way we said is like, we're gonna clarify clarify what you're trying to do. I'm going to think of some ways that I can help you. And then we're going to come up with a plan for you to take action on it. And that is one of the key things. So when your strategy session, of course, you're doing it to see if they, you're a match for them. And that's really what the conversation is about. So you need to let them know they're going to have to make a decision. They're going to have to take action. And I want to see that really early that this is a conversation that needs to lead to some type of action, whether it be like, no, I'm not starting a YouTube channel or no, I'm not investing in real estate or no, or yes, but a decision action. And so that's how it starts off. So I usually, you know, thank them, say what I got to say, and then I open it up and it's a lot of questions. So we'll talk about that. I really like that. And what I see in that is you're really taking charge of the conversation. Absolutely. If you started that way with me, I would know, okay, there is a plan, Yeah. but it would take away any fear or any hesitation I might have in the conversation because I know like, we're just going to chat and yeah. this is where we're going. And so yeah. I, it gives me confidence in that. And then your point where you said that they have to take an action or at least letting them no, you're going to be, you know, making a choice and yeah. acting at the end. That's something that I could learn from because I mean, that's, that's always my intention. Right. But I think stating it up front. State your intention. Yeah. yeah. And that was, again, I've been in coaching and I was coached on kind of how to do strategy sessions and make them most effective from one of my mentors. And that was one of the first things she said, you really need to set the intention. And so, as like I said, I've done so many of them. When I first started the YouTube channel, I maybe didn't have that part in it. And at the end of me doing strategy sessions before I transitioned it to other people, I even told them how scared them getting on the phone was with me was you know we get a hundred applications per day we're not able to get on all of them I saw something in your application that I thought we might be a really good fit and so that's why I'm on the phone with you and so now too they're like oh really so you know there was other people that I beat out for this call absolutely I need you to know that so I, we're not wasting time you know what I mean and I'm you're someone special that I thought I should talk to so kind of live up to that <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. All right. So that's step one. What is step two? So then step two is a real deep dive on them. So one of the things that I think that people make a big mistake with doing strategy sessions as the person offering is they want this person to be a client. Why? I don't know that. I need to talk to you and again, make sure this is a fit. So just as much as this is a sales call, this is an interview to see if we are truly a fit. I need to kind of start asking you questions so I can get your personality, I can get your motivation, I can get your financial situation, kind of all of that. So we go right into it and I say to them, then you know, right before I say this, I'm gonna ask you some questions and we're gonna have a conversation. Is that good? Get them to say, okay, then we get into it. And I first start with, why did you decide to have this conversation with me? That's the first thing. Like what inspired you to have this conversation? What motivated you to have this conversation? Again, why are we on the phone? Well, I really love the power of questions. And what that really does is a lot of times when you get a call and if you don't have a plan like this and you don't state the intentions, yeah. they're naturally gonna start asking us questions. Right. And so if, if you state the intentions and you start asking them questions, you're able to really control where the conversation goes and make it a, a fruitful conversation. Absolutely. And I know for some people, they're a little like, wait, you said you were going to do a strategy session and answer their questions. And maybe I will. In some cases, I answer maybe just some of the questions at the end, but I am not going to get on the phone when you start barraging with questions. That's not a great conversation. That is not. You really have to stay in control of the conversation. Another important thing that I want to say is with the questions is because it truly is an interview. I really want to know, should we be working together? And I already know who I am, so I need to know, who are you? <laughs> 
<laughs> so when I have a call like this, I know that I'm kind of looking at different stages. Yeah. And so I would say we're on stage two. Is there something you're looking for in stage two before you move on to stage three, for example? No, for like I said, so some of my first question, my first question, of course, what motivated you to take the call? They're going to say, I was watching your YouTube videos. I was doing X, Y, and Z. I've been trying X, Y, and Z. I may ask them some of the things that they have tried and things they've attempted before, classes they've taken, again, trying to kind of get their history and what's worked for them and what hasn't. And then I immediately just get back into what are their goals. So for me, the strategy session is about creating the future that they want to create. And I want to know what their vision is. So a question that I ask that is so powerful is tell me what your goals are professionally, personally, and financially. And they have to answer each one of those X. So say, I want to be a millionaire. Specifically, personally, professionally, and financially. I want a personal goal too. Like I would like to get more healthy. I want to eat better. I want to get in great shape. Cause I know it's not just about money. So I need to know like who you are as a person. So I need all kind of those three areas. So, and if they're not answering or they're giving me vague answers, so tell me more about that. I just keep pulling so I can get their vision. I need to be able to see, do they have a vision for themselves? that I can help with. So I know when I'm having conversations like this, I'll get a variety of, of different responses. Those that are kind of wishy-washy or a little bit more vague, do you go to step four? No, I get them to answer the question. I really do. We may never get to the end and I may never even offer them anything. If I can't get them to start answering my questions and giving me some detail and some specifics, they have their barriers up. Because some people do come to the call like, oh, what are you gonna offer me? What are you gonna offer me? And I'm not, probably not gonna offer you anything. If you're not answering my questions and I don't know who you are, there will be no offer. And that's why I said, I mean that when I say I'm setting the intention that we are having a conversation, I mean that I've gotten off the phone, been on people for hours and I did not make an offer. They didn't answer my questions. I don't know what they're trying to do with their life. I don't see their vision. I'm going to offer them the best. Like, Hey, some books you probably need to read. Keep watching my YouTube channel. I'm going to give them something, but I am not offering them my mentorship. Now think about the integrity of that. And if say we have a program that we sell, that's $10,000, we could tell them the price. We could tell them the features and yeah. even the outcomes yeah. But if, if we don't know right. where they're at, yeah. and so we talked about asking them questions about where they are, what they've been trying, then we find out what are their goals. Yeah. And that's where we can start to like fit the pieces of this puzzle together. Like, okay, this is what they want. Can my program, Get you them know, there. We, we can start to yeah. piece that picture together without yeah. answers to that question. We have no idea right. if they're a fit or not, if right. their goals align with what we can offer. Correct. Correct. And that's why I said it's not some sales call and it's not somewhere where everyone's getting an offer no matter what. Obviously, I would just put my prices and put that on the website and you could just click it and buy it. That's why it's not on my website because I'm not just going to take any single person. Again, I wanted to create a business where I got to kind of pick my clients, where I get my quality of life. And if I'm on the phone with a crazy person, I don't care if this crazy person is rich and has money to pay me. I'm not interested. And I was that way before I had money. And I think that's why I've been successful. You cannot just coach people and do things for the money. You're not going to be happy. All right. So let's say you ask these questions. Yeah. And you find out what their goals are. Their goals right. are really specific and yeah. clear. Yeah. Where do you take them next? So then obviously we go through their goals and that. So then they're going to tell me their goals. And then I'm going to ask them this pivotal question. And I'm really telling you a big secret now. I'm going to ask them about some gaps. So they tell me all these great things. And then, so of course I'm going to ask them questions about where they are now. So I can kind of create that gap. They see where they want to be and they see where they currently are. And you have to make that apparent to them that they are not where they want to be. And again, you're the thing to get them to close that gap. So now I'm going to say, what challenges have you had? What are some of the things that haven't worked for you? Again, pulling them out so that they, they're not leaving the conversation like, oh, I know exactly what I'm doing. They know that there's a piece missing and it's probably mentorship, a course, education, something that I have to offer. That's an important piece. And then I know you're going to ask for. this. I want to know how much they're willing to do this mm -hmm. on a scale of one to 10. How serious are you with this challenge? And I asked that and I, and they got to give me a net. So I'm, I'm a 10. Great. Now too, I'm going to tell you, you told me you were a 10. You told me you were at a 10. So when I offer you something that's $10,000, you said you were motivated to the highest level possible. So that's not an issue. That's huge. A few things that we really got to pull out of this is we find out what their goals are, yep. but we've got to ask questions and help them to see like, why aren't they there now? What is keeping them from accomplishing that Correct. goal? When they say, yeah, I'm stuck. I'm at this roadblock. I've had this challenge and I've had these setbacks. I've been trying for years and years and years. And you can say, well, 
well, if we go another year and we're still in the same place and we haven't accomplished that goal, how big of a problem is that going to be? Right. Right. And yeah, so if we, can, we can help them really acknowledge the gap. Correct. You have to get them to acknowledge the gap. You have to get them to acknowledge the gap. If you go into your offer and just start offering your mentorship without them actually realizing that they there is a gap between where they want to be and where they currently are, they're not going to ever invest because it's an investment. Again, you're not buying Noel. You're never going to be able to copy my exact success, but are you going to invest in yourself to get you to that next level the same way that Noel did? Well, cool. Now we can talk. So now we know that they acknowledge the gap. Yeah. How do you make that offer? Okay. So then you go into your pitch. You know, I have an idea sometimes. This is Noel. Again, you have your own personality, but I, I do. I take it almost like, oh, I have something I want to run by you. I think that is a, a line that I use. I have something I want to run by you. I happen to have, you know, almost like haphazardly. I happen to have some people that I coach and I mentor. They're getting together. They're working on building X, Y, and Z. We're going to be working together. I think you might be a great fit. Would you like to hear about it? Again, get their permission. Do you want to know about this? Yes. Yes, I do. Awesome. Well, I have this six month program. You can work with me for X, Y, and Z. You're going to learn at the end again, same thing at the end of it. You're going to be able to know how to do this. You're going to be able to know how to do this. I have this, you have your scripts, you have your templates. It's going to require this amount from you. My students, you know, give them a couple of things. Students, I've had students that have did da 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 da. Obviously we can't guarantee your success, but this has been some of the experiences of other people. It usually costs X, Y, and Z. If you take action on this call today, I'll give you a, a scholarship and I'll give it to this. Da, 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 da. Here's the price. And then I pause. And that part right there, that pause, oh my gosh, was that difficult in the beginning? Because again, you're nervous. You just made a pitch. You know, it's $10,000. And you're just like, that's awesome. That part I've actually forgotten about because it, it comes naturally to me now that once I make a, an offer or you know ask a closing question like that, you just sit there and wait for their answer. Correct. So, and that tension is hard for some people, mm -hmm. but it is not. Do not tame the tension, I think is what my mentor told me. It does me. come with confidence. Like the more yeah. confident you are in the solution that you provide, the more right. experience you have, that part does get easier. It does. And two, the more confident and that you really listen to them. You were taking notes and you were writing back and you can kind of, if they start to object a little bit, you can point out things that they said and start to use their words, their goals, their wants to push them to take action. Because that's really, like I said, what the conversation was about. Even if the answer is no, and I'm not doing it, make a decision. Oh, you're not doing it. You're not going to do. So you're going to go back to doing what you're going to do. And you're confident and happy with your decision. Cool. Mission accomplished. I appreciate this so much. And I want to share something and see if you agree with me. Okay. So to set it up though, mm -hmm. like if you were to rewind this video and take notes there, we've talked about five different steps. Yes. Okay. The first thing that I'll say is if you follow these five steps, you will have way more sales. Guaranteed. Absolutely. So here's the thing that I'm going to say though. If you're not perfect, it's okay. Because I, I look at some of the conversations and I look back after the fact and sometimes like, you know what? I skipped a step and I'm like, I feel dumb about it, but I still got the customer. Yeah. Like, so the, the reality is. Or you if, made every single step and you didn't get the customer. Yeah, <laughs> totally true. So the reality is if you take notes and you implement these five steps, and I recommend like having some type of note card or something to remind you, it will increase the number of of customers that you have, the, the people that you help, but also like give yourself some slack yeah. because some people, they are ready to be customers, even if you right. just gave them an offer right That's at the true. beginning. Correct. So, right. So practice this, but also cut yourself some slack. Would you agree with that? I do agree. So we have created an entire course that we would love to see you in. You can go to youtubesalesmastery.com and get our entire course where we teach you everything that we have talked about today on this video, plus the entire leaf strategy, plus the entire structure of the videos, pretty much everything that you would need in order to start your own channel and turn it into a lead generating machine. Go to youtubesalesmastery.com, use the code YouTube and you can save 50%. This is a limited time offer. Sales are limited. Obviously we can't work with everyone, but we would love to work with you. Again, youtubesalesmastery.com, use the code YouTube. I cannot wait to see you in class.